This absolute beast is the Bentley Mulsanne, and it is the most luxurious Bentley you can buy. I say you can buy, you can't actually buy it anymore. They've just stopped production, which is really, really sad because this thing is just absolutely insanely special. I'm gonna show you around the interior and explain all of its key features. The car I've got here costs 290,000 pounds, and you'll see that it is actually worth all that money. In fact, I think this car is even more special than the Rolls-Royce Phantom. The Mulsanne is a huge car. It's 5.6 meters long, though this one is the extended wheelbase version. It's actually 5.8 meters long. It's huge. This car has a two-tone paint scheme. So you've got rose gold on top, magnetic lower down. So they initially spray the whole car with the rose gold, the top color, and then a man hand sprays the bottom color on. And you'd be amazed that this line is perfectly straight, yet it's done by a human, a human who quite obviously has OCD. The Morsan's wings, its doors are made out of aluminium to help keep the weight down. Though this thing still weighs in at over 2.6 tons. Now most of the body panels are pressed in the normal way, but this part is actually done using old fashioned coach building techniques. So a human with a coach builder's wheel bending the sheet metal by hand to create this glorious shape. Oh, weird. You might be thinking that the Flying Bee mascot could be pretty lethal in the event of a pedestrian impact, but they've thought about that because look, now oh, you see, though I think whoever you hit is gonna be shredded by the grill anyway. Ow. What we have here is the heart of the Mulsan. It's a 6.75 litre twin turbo V8. It's been hand built as well. This engine's design actually dates back to the 1950s, but obviously it's been modernized and you get modern performance. So 505 horsepower, and 1,020 newton meters of torque. If you have the speed version of this car, you then have 530 horsepower and 1,100 newton meters of torque. That drives the rear wheels by an eight speed automatic gearbox. The back seats of a Bentley Mulsanne is one of the best ways to travel, especially if you have this long wheelbase version. I mean, look how much leg room I've got here. Headroom's really good as well. If you need even more room, you can press this button and then you can take control of the front passenger seat and move that around forward and tilt it more upright to give yourself even more space. The sheer amount of wood and leather and metal is incredible. And you've got loads and loads of features as well. So look at this, very posh walnut picnic table, but that is the beginning of it all. There's also airplane star folders on the seat backs and they feel very posh. And in them we have a magazine to celebrate Bentley's 100 years, centenary in 2019, lovely. Check this out, right? If I just press this button, we have the infotainment screen popping out the front seat back. Doesn't come cheap though, this rear entertainment system. 16,000 pounds. <laughs> this car also has the comfort specification. So you've got the super luxurious rear seats, which are ventilated. They've got massage function. And of course you can move them. So I'm moving it and I can recline the backrest as well. We have some under calf support allows you to really just sit back and relax and enjoy the ride. Plus look, you've got super comfy pillows and extra pillows here as well for the small of your back. <laughs> Come on, Bentley. There we go. Isn't that lovely? Now, being a Bentley, you get air conditioning, four zone climate control, of course, but you don't just have it blowing out from one place, you have ventilation for your feet, ventilation for your middle section, and ventilation for your upper body. It's so luxurious. This car's even got a glass roof, and it's not just a normal sunroof, you can actually open it, which is really unusual to have an opening sunroof in the back seat. But this is a super luxurious Bentley. Under here you have some storage. Yeah, it's not that interesting, a couple of USB ports. But I like the way the covering is frosted glass, there's another thing I want to show you which has frosted glass. Look at this, right? Underneath here is your fridge. So it has room for your champagne. In fact, there's room for two bottles of champagne in there. And it comes with cut crystal glass champagne flutes. Oh, lovely. It's expensive though. Eight and a half thousand pounds for this fridge. <laughs> but if you can afford one of these cars, you don't really care, do you? You can afford it. Underneath here, you have another table. Though, 
it's a little bit of a puzzle to figure out how to work it, but there we go, I, I learned how to do it. But look at this, it's so luxurious, though it is a bit wobbly. It might not be ideal for resting things on other than a laptop. To get it back, how do you do this? Yes, then I'll press the button there and fold it. Um, is that right? No, okay, press that and in we go. So that'll keep you entertained for a wee while. Some other things to note, your ashtray. That is solid metal. You could do someone some serious damage with that. Underneath here is your cigarette lighter, all shrouded in leather. <laughs> Why is that covered in leather? I don't know, it just is. I also like this feature as well. well you, you don't want people looking in at you because you're obviously a really important VIP. You don't want to get papped. Yeah, just shut the curtains. That is quite a long rear window, isn't it, if you think about it? And if you really want to be in total privacy, you can shut the back curtain as well. It's like an old-fashioned cinema screen. I know, I can just sit back and relax and um, chill. One of the key things about the Mulsanne is that it's not just a car that you get driven in. It's a car designed for you to be the driver as well. And it's lovely in the way that it's set out. So the driving position, you actually sit quite low and very central. So it has a sort of sporty edge to it, but then you've got that combined with all the luxury. I mean, there's so much dead cow in here. I feel sorry for poor Daisy, but she didn't die in vain. I mean, this leather is lovely. And there's lots of trees that have been felled. And these aren't just like little thin veneers. This is almost like solid wood, things that look like metal. They are solid metal. We're not talking like shiny bits of plastic here. And the buttons, you won't see these buttons in any other car. This is a bespoke vehicle, not bits from a Golf or other bits of the VW Group. It's all unique to this Mulsanne. And this screen, look at the size of this screen. It's a little bit old fashioned now. And the screen on my phone is almost as big as that. And the definition is very 2015. Well, forgive it, because then below you've got some analogue dials, which are just so in keeping with the old traditional Bentley feel. Analogue dials for the speedo and the rev counter, and yet there's a digital screen in between, but yet again, it's a little bit old fashioned, that screen, low definition. We've got some storage solutions though, so that's all fine. We've got another one of these solid ashtrays, so you could have a fight with your passenger in the back. All trimmed with leather, another there's lots of these, actually. In modern cars, these are just like little things to fill in the 12 volt socket, but in this Bentley, they are actually cigarette lighters. Yeah, it says a lot about the customer. Big, fat cigars. That's me smoking a cigar, by the way. Anyway, under here, you've got a cup holder, which you can adjust to suit the size of your beverage. And even this little tray here is lined with leather. And if you want to keep your mobile phone out of sight, you could fit it in there. It even fits the very latest big smartphones like my Samsung Galaxy Ultra. Then under here you have a small glove box because most of it's taken up by a DVD changer. <laughs> Look at that! When was the last time you watched a DVD? <laughs> you got some door bins down here and then lots of other nice bits of materials that you can just touch and enjoy the opulence. And then there's these seats. Oh, they are very, very comfy. And I think you have 12 way adjustment. Of course, they're massage as well, obviously. Yes, this is a very nice car to sit in either the front or the back. Let's have a little bit of a chat about the Morsan's practicality. So obviously it's got a boot and to get into it, there's not a button underneath here. You press the B. Voila. Now this boot, the size is okay. There's a bit of a load lip look to lift your heavy luggage over. Oh. But look at this, look at the carpeting in here. It's just so lovely, I'd almost like to get in here. I also like this, the way you have your umbrellas in the boot. There, look at this. Feel like I should be in the film The Kingsman. Oxfords or Brogues? What do you think of the design of this car? Now, I wouldn't say that it was particularly pretty, but it's definitely striking. In that way, it's a bit like Mick Jagger, though obviously it's not quite as wrinkled as him. I really do like these lights, though. They're, they're like jewellery. And I like the way they say Bentley inside them. This is another cool feature about them as well. If you just wait there, when you do the windscreen wash, it actually washes the lights. And I love the way a little device pops out to wash it. I'm getting a bit wet here. See? That's kind of cool. It means that you're always shining brightly up the road. The side of this car is more elegant. It's sort of swoopy yet muscular. Lots of chrome, of course. I like the flying bee, the way it 
extends all the way down here with this chrome element. Wheel sizes start at 20s, but these are the 21s. And you've got some huge brakes in there, but you need them because this is a heavy, heavy car. The rear of the Mulsanne reminds me of the swooping tails of Bentleys from the 1930s and 40s. I like the way that you've got the letter B in the tail lights there, though obviously it doesn't work quite so well over the other side unless you're looking at it in a mirror, but there you go. You've also got the classic oval Bentley tailpipes, and now I've got soot on my hands. Great. All right, let's see what this Mulsanne is like to drive and be driven in, and that's why I've got my girlfriend Jo with me to pass verdicts on this car as a passenger. <laughs> How you doing, Joe? You all right? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Are you comfy back there? Very. Good. Get used to this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, the first thing to note about this car is comfort. Comfort matters on a luxury limousine. This has air suspension and it's adaptive, so it's reading the road, responding, depending on the conditions and how I'm driving. And it is very comfy. What's it like for you back there? It's lovely, very spacious incredibly comfortable. Now I'm going to do a little motoring journalist thing here where I've got to compare it to another car and the key car to compare it to is of course the Rolls-Royce Ghost and I've recently driven the new Rolls-Royce Ghost so it's quite interesting to back to back the two. This car is comfy right you say over bumps you don't really notice them but you notice them a little bit more than you do in the Ghost. Now what I want to do is explain to you the comfort on this car. So if you think about the most comfortable thing you could have and that would be lying on something like a vice sprung mattress. Spring. Vice spring mattress thanks for correcting me Joe. That will give you a comfort factor of 10. Then driving along in a Rolls Royce Ghost would be a comfort factor of 9. Driving in this is a comfort factor of eight. One less than the Rolls Royce. You might think that doesn't really matter, does it? One, one less, you know, an eight out of 10 for comfort in terms of the suspension is actually very good. But when you're at this end of the market, that extra one point does matter. And that's slightly where this car falls down. It just isn't the smoothest luxury limousine out there. And that does matter to some people such as motoring journalists who are trying to justify their existence by evaluating different cars. One thing that goes in this Bentley's favour though, that it is more fun to actually drive than a Rolls Royce. You just feel more connected to the car, you feel more through the steering, you feel a bit more through your bottom. It seems to just grip the road a bit better. It's definitely got that Bentley element, it combines luxury with performance and an engaging drive. And this Mulsanne, even though it's absolutely massive, does that. I'm not entirely sure you're going to appreciate this from the back seat though. <laughs> Getting flung about as I hoon this thing around some corners. I don't know, it's all right so far. Now, can you feel it? Now the suspension, now we're driving in town, it's a little bit bumpy. You can feel the odd like jiggle and wiggle, can't you, under your yeah. bottom. Now, you've been in the back of the Rolls-Royce Ghost. Do you remember that? I do remember that. Did that feel a bit smoother? I think so, but then we were stuck in traffic quite a lot. So I, I don't think I could really compare the two. Well, I'm going to do a U-turn here to just check the manoeuvrability of this car, because obviously that's important. <laughs> this could be a bit embarrassing. Not going to get around in one go. That's what happens when you've got a car that's 5.8 metres in length. Is it really that long? Oh, it is really that long, yes. <laughs> I thought you knew that already. Why does it always end up there, Watson? What do you mean? <laughs> when it's some kind of like crass innuendo. I can't say anything without you taking it the wrong way. Off my USP, Joe. Uh -huh. Even though it's a big vehicle and quite wide, I'm not finding it too difficult just navigating it through the streets. I think it's so imposing looking that other cars like that just seem to get out of the way. Excuse me, I'm coming through my big Bentley. You better pull over, because I'm considerably richer than you are. They're obviously thinking that you're a VIP in the back. <laughs> Should I close the blinds? Don't get too carried away. One thing that is really relaxing about this car is the engine, this big old V8. It provides 100% of its torque, full 1,020 newton meters from just 1,700 RPM, which is insane. It doesn't rev very high. It doesn't need to though, because it's just got so much pulling power. You plant your right foot and... <laughs> it goes, doesn't it? It really goes. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. And it sounds good as well. Do you like the yeah. sound of it? really nice. It's good when it comes to overtaking slower cars. Please drive carefully, driver. Being the chauffeur, you've got to do exactly what Madam or Sir wants. It's definitely got more class inside than the Rolls. It feels more British, doesn't it, than the Rolls Royce? So if you could have the Ghost or this, which would you pick? I would have this, but in a different colour outside. Really? I love this colour. What, would you have it in black? 
No, probably. You'd dark have it in black. Grey. No, you'd have it in black. Dark grey to black. <laughs> I can't help it. You think the engine's pretty quick, but one of the things I really like to do is launch a car. So we're actually going to do a naught to sixty time. Are you all right with that, Joe? I am. You sure? As long as you're safe. I'm going to pull over. I'm going to do it down that way. I've got my specialist timing gear here. We're going to time it from 0 to 60. What time do you think this car's going to do? 3.7. Are you joking? It weighs like 2.6 tonnes. Um, Have another guess. 5.4. 5.4. Let's do it. You ready? Okay. Oh, struggling for traction a bit. You're not far wrong. It did 5.27. Well, I was way off with my first answer. <laughs> well, it was kind of a little ambitious, but that's all right, isn't it? 5.27 seconds to 60, and it struggled for grip because it's sending all that power just to the rear wheels. It felt very smooth still, though. That was all down to my driving and the way I managed <laughs> the power and the traction. Yeah, right. Do you like going for a drive in this? I do, yeah. If I go a little bit quicker now, see if you feel a little bit car sick. I don't tend to get car sick. It is quite impressive the way it goes around corners for such a big thing. It does give a good blend of comfort and engagement, which is what you want from a Bentley. Oof! And the brakes are good too. I also like the fact that the pedals are so lovely. Big aluminium pedals. So if you could have any car that I've driven over the last year or so, which would you keep? Could be this, could be the Rolls, could be the RS6 we've got at the moment. What, what would it be? I think it's, if you have this, you have to have a driver with it, don't you, I think? Well, what do you think I am? Yeah, but. It's a bit weird you sort of driving and me sitting in the back. Unless this came with a driver, I probably wouldn't have this. I'm definitely not a Rolls Royce kind of girl. Can't believe I'm actually even saying that. So, why aren't you a Rolls Royce kind of girl? Just, they're just a bit too chunky. So, what would you have? What would be your ideal car of all the ones I've had so far? The new RS6 at the moment, after driving that the other day. So, you'd have the RS6 over the G Wagon? I don't know, it's different. I, I always loved driving the G-Wagon. Every time I got out of the G-Wagon, it always made me feel happy. The G-Wagon is the vehicle that you get out of, like you say, and you're like, oh, it's so cool, I love it. But the actual reality of driving it, it is not as good as the RS6. The RS6 is more comfortable, it's easier to drive, but that G got all the character, hasn't it? I did love it, yeah. I mean, you can't not love it. Unless you're dead inside. Oh, is it this way? I have no idea, I don't even know where I am. And I'll be sacked, I wouldn't I? <laughs> Have we been past here already? Bad chauffeuring, bad. The only way it could get worse is if I crash. Oh God, please don't. Oh, not too fast, slow down. I'm assessing the car, not my job. Not with me in the back. Sorry, madam. We are now getting closer to your estate. Finally, we're back. God, I'd hate to be a chauffeur. That's not the entrance there, that's not where we started we, we, This is fine. <laughs> It'll do. Well, there you go, my dear. I hope you enjoyed the ride. Thank you, kind sir. So then, what's my final verdict on the Bentley Mulsan? Well, it's an absolutely gorgeous car that's lovely to be driven in and actually good fun to drive. It's a shame they're not going to be making it anymore. Goodbye, old dear. I love you. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. Also, let me know of any other videos you'd like me to do in the comments below. If you want to watch some more content, click on the windows there. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way you won't miss a single upload. Thanks for watching.